This thing beside me, it's a soldering fan, a fume extractor, and it might just be the most over-engineered product I've ever made. It's, a, it's not a product, it's, it's a project. Let's talk about scope creep, shall we? It happened to me, and it can happen to you. This project started a while back, as most good projects do, on YouTube. Scrolling through some old comment sections, and I noticed a lot of people were saying, Hey, Elliot, you should have a soldering fume extractor, or a fan, to deal with the smoke from soldering all those weird robots you do. And these people are completely right, and that brought up two quick things. One, thank you for caring about my health, it means a lot. The second one was, well, I did have an idea in the back of my mind, and this has been on the to-do list for a while. Unfortunately, that idea kind of spiraled out of control. The first thought I had was make a simple box fan and have an enclosure that was made of wood and paper, similar to my CRT display I have here. But then I thought, well, if, it's, if I'm making that, maybe I should make a lamp-shaped enclosure. Those are also paper. And then I thought, well, what if I do that? I might as well also have a lamp. And if it's also a lamp, then maybe it should have some sort of articulated arm. That could also be useful for the fume extraction, right? I could move it around and put it where I want. Okay, why not if I'm gonna make a mobile arm, maybe I do something to copy, copy an actual lamp, like this one I have right here. And that kind of sent me down the rabbit hole of building something that was significantly more complicated than I needed to, but that was pretty enjoyable to learn and quite challenging, which is sometimes the point. So I broke this down into three different sections, and let's go through it one step at a time. The first was the lamp fan enclosure bit, this, this thing right here. It started all out again on a YouTube rabbit hole, where I was looking at how things are made in Japanese factories, and there was an old 360p video of this dude building a you know paper lantern sort of thing. And the way they built it was really interesting. So I decided to copy that, but just in miniature for this. The proper full-size version of these lamps use bamboo stringers around the outside of the lantern to hold its shape. But try as I might, I could not get bamboo to work on this scale. So the solution I came up with for that was to wrap this in a piece of thin string, uh, and then I would coat that string in PVA glue, which would harden it into roughly the right shape. This would mean I could have the shape of the lantern, um, and it would be a lot easier to build than a stiff bent section. I also tried with wire and stuff. This is like the third iteration of the design, um, but this is the easiest build thing I came up with, at least on this scale. Then it came time to cover this. I decided to cover this in incredibly lightweight tissue that is usually used for things like um, rubber-powered airplanes. I had a bunch of this from some of my other projects, and because this was so small, the super thin tissue worked really well um, to cover this and kind of conform to the shape a little bit better than I think some of the heavier paper would do. Once that was all covered, I coated the entire thing in a mixture of PVA and water. This would help seal everything up, firm it up, and make sure everything was solidly connected to each other. Once that was done, I was able to take out the inside of the forms and I had a tiny version of an actual lantern.
but it didn't look great like this. So I decided to seal off the top end with a wooden ring, which again, led down its own rabbit hole. I cut out a very thin strip of wood veneer, boiled it, and then wrapped it around a form with tape. Um, this would allow it to kind of dry or cure, I don't exactly know what happens, into the right shape. And then I could glue that up, finish it, and then glue it onto the end of my lantern. Obviously this would blow air through it, and I don't think it would blow very well through the sides of this lantern. So I decided to make it a plastic tube, which would act to kind of direct the airflow, as well as add a little bit of structure to the inside of the lantern. I could not find exactly what I was looking for online, and I ended up just going to the supermarket and finding a cosmetics container that was in roughly the right diameter, and I chopped that up to make this. Once I was happy with the top part of the lantern, the next step was to build an enclosure for the fan. I made this out of, again, very thin, lightweight wood. This was relatively straightforward to do, although on the scale I was dealing with and the size of the wooden parts, it was a little bit tricky. Once I had everything ready to go, I glued in a couple of these uh, standoffs that are usually used for PCBs, um, and that would work to hold my fan in and I could thread everything together. Once this was done, my fan section or my fan lamp section was effectively finished. But that meant I was on to the next step. And you know what? I thought this would be the easy part. Unfortunately, I made it extremely hard for myself.
with the physical parts of this almost ready to go, that just left one major hurdle, which was the electronics. Now I'm not gonna go into super deep detail about the electronics because they're not super special, and also I'm not super proud of them, but I'll give you a rough overview here. So the speed control for the fan is done with an LM386 audio amplifier. Now you might look at that and think, why not just run it on a PWM signal that's way more efficient than an audio amp that's gonna burn a bunch of heat or a bunch of voltage as heat. And I have a good reason for that. That's these little brushless motor fans really don't like PWM signals. And I think that's because the controller inside generates its own signal. So it doesn't really like a chopped up um, input. Now you, I could have used a different fan for sure they would be fine with that. And I think they even have speed controlled computer fans like this, but I already had this fan there and I wanted to use it. Now that might sound a bit odd considering how many other parts of this project kind of went out of control. Why not just get a different fan? But hey, I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I started this. I, yeah, don't know what to tell you with that one. The other side of the electronics is the LED driver. And now this does use PWM. So I have a 555 set up as a oscillating signal generator. And then I take the triangle wave off of that and feed it into one side of an op amp. The other side of the op amp is driven off of the output of my LM386. That way I only have one potentiometer and which will adjust the uh, brightness of my LEDs and the speed of my motor. And then I just have a switch which toggles between them. So you either have lights with the same uh, brightness adjustment or you have the fan with the speed adjust there. Once I had the basics all ready to go and everything actually worked, it was time to polish off the little odds and ends, get everything working and button up for one last time. This was a bit of a job and I'll show you a little time lapse of me doing it here. Now you might look at this and think, well, it's pretty cool looking, Elliot. Please think it's cool. I need the external validation. Um, but does it actually work as its original job? Does it work as a fan? And the answer is, yeah, it does actually. It's pretty convenient. It could be a bit more powerful. I might build a second version, which might be an even bigger rabbit hole than this one, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But it's a really convenient little thing. It sits on my desk. I use it all the time. And now, if you ever have a comment that's like, wow, you should have a fume extractor, guess what? I do. Thank you. Because of you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have a good one. I'll uh, see you next time.